good evening everyone thank you so much for joining for the online regional formation i am premita fernandes of ofs from padri pio fraternity thani let us begin today's session by signing ourselves in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen psalm 91 he who dwells in the shelter of the most high who abides in the shadow of the almighty will say to the lord my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i trust for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness is a shield and a buckler you will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness nor destruction that waste at noonday a thousand may fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you you will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the lord your refuge the most high your habitation no evil shall befall you no scourge come near your tent for he will give his angels charge of you to guard you in all your ways on their hands they will bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone you will tread on the lion and the adder the young lion and the serpent you will trample under foot because he clings to me in love i will deliver him i'll protect him because he knows my name when he calls to me i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will rescue him and honor him with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation Psalm one twenty one, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, you keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And to thou, Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God. thrust into hell satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us in us now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. so good evening once again to all today's topic is formation as we have entered into this third order we hear so many times about the formation we have joined also for the session of formation so what is this formation all about and what role does it play in our life as franciscans that we are going to study in this session so let's start by seeing what is formation here we are given some of the definitions of formation firstly the act of giving form or shape to anything a forming or shaping means to give shape or form to something the manner in which a thing is formed structure construction related with a human system a substance formed or deposited 
mineral deposits and rocks the different types of formations of rocks the arrangement of a body of troops as in a square or a column the arrangement of soldiers during a march or during any national festivals so through this we understand what is formation in general but how does this formation helps us let's see that formation is about undergoing a change in form a metamorphosis so as franciscans it is very important for us to understand formation as a change related with metamorphosis now what is metamorphosis metamorphosis is a greek word that means transformation or change in shape where we are under continuous change for example here you see in the picture this picture shows of the life cycle of a monarch butterfly the monarch butterfly lays eggs and these eggs grow up to be larva this larva further grows to become pupa and the pupa further develops to become a chrysalis and then through this chrysalis an adult monarch butterfly is developed so as you see from the egg to the adult butterfly this is a process which takes about 30 days so it's a completely transformation from the egg to the larva to a butterfly so same form or same transformation is expected from us this is the reason we undergo the formation let us see some of the formations through this diagram human formation spiritual formation intellectual formation franciscan formation there are uh, various types of formations i have selected these four and let's study these in brief so let's see what's first human formation the human qualities of truth truthfulness respect for others justice integrity affability generosity kindness courtesy and prudence to gain the different values human values to respect others to love others the capacity to relate to others in a positive manner and the ability to get along with others and work with them in community to live in a community to live a social life that is what we are formed as humans good self knowledge self discipline and self mastery including emotional self control good physical and mental health a balanced lifestyle and balance in making judgments so this all qualities are related in the human formation you Hum as human beings are formed from childhood to the adulthood we undergo different types of changes physically emotionally socially spiritually so these changes are related with human formation intellectual formation personal experience is crucial to the development of intellect because in resolving the problems of life a person can attain enlightenment the full intellectual comprehension of a situation and so improve his and her behavior in order to act reasonably and appropriately in a society for example the examples and the experiences that face we face in a society have a deep impact on our intellectual being on how we are formed intellectually if we had a good experience in our lives through our society we turn out to take everything in a positive way but if we undergo some bad experiences in our society we tend to become negative in our lives so very important it is to understand the intellectual formation of a person this formation also through the experiences in the society now as christians we also undergo a spiritual formation 
spiritual formation for the christian basically refers to the spirit driven process of forming the inner world of the human self in such a way that it becomes like the inner being of christ himself so as we try to imitate the values and the virtues of christ because we are created in the image and likeness of christ so we learn more and more about the life of christ as we grow in our spiritual formation this formation also we receive through the various sacraments through the sacrament of holy communion through the sacrament of confirmation through the sacrament of holy matrimony so before all these sacraments we notice that we undergo a catechism where we are taught about our catholic faith which helps us in building our spiritual formation formation makes us effective and effective ministers of the word of god or in general the kingdom of god to understand what is the kingdom of god the formation plays a very important role it makes us effective that is successful in producing a desired result and also effective that is it helps we are able to influence others by the life of we, uh, the but by the life that we lead now how this formation was there from the time of jesus let's study that continuation of christ's own work of formation the history of church provides us with various models of formation it is important to note that all these attempts are a continuation of christ's own work of formation so formation in the history of church is not something which is newly come up it is the old tradition of having formations which jesus too had formation for his disciples and for the apostles as we read in the gospel of mark chapter 3 verses 13 to 15 and he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired and they came to him and he appointed 12 to be with him and to be sent out to preach and have authority to cast out demons so jesus through his exped through his miracle working through his healing and through his interaction with the people around taught his apostles how to carry out the ministry so he jesus interest interested his ministry to the 12 apostles during jesus's lifetime so the, through this we understand that how the apostles also underwent formation the importance of formation is demanding an important task for the future of humanity so formation is very important for our overall development now let us see what is formation in the ofs ofs also called as sfo so franciscan formation is based on personal encounter with the lord so as saint francis had a personal encounter with lord we too need to have a personal relationship with god and begins with the call of god and the individual's decision to walk with saint francis in the footsteps of the poor and crucified christ as his disciple under the action of the holy spirit so it's a call of god and it's the individual's decision it's not that someone else has called you and you are influenced that by that person and that's why you join this order but it is the god's call for you for this order franciscan formation is a continuous process of growth and conversion involving the whole of a person's life called to develop his or own particular human christian and franciscan dimensions radically living the holy gospel in the spirit of prayer and devotion in fraternity means in being a franciscan is related by being a human a good human being a good christian and then you 
are on the path of becoming a good franciscan mostly influenced by living the holy gospel by the spirit of prayer and devotion and to being in the life of fraternity the following of jesus christ in the manner of saint francis leads us to commit ourselves to the church and with her to place ourselves at the service of the men and women now let's see as we saw through the life of jesus christ how the formation was given to the apostles let's see through the life of saint francis how he too underwent and gave his followers to the formation the following of christ was shape of saint francis by his encounters with the leper by listening to the gospel and at san damiano cross in these every circumstances or events of his life saint francis encountered jesus and he fell in love with jesus the poor crucified christ these experiences made saint francis grow in his passionate love of the poor and crucified christ until his complete conformity with him on la verna la verna was the place where saint francis received the stigmata on 14th september the strong experience of god as father and the highest good characterized life of saint francis so as he gave up all his wealth and he disowned his own parents and he proclaimed god the father as his father this shows how saint francis was had a zeal a seraphic love to jesus so this shows how he was transformed completely from being a youth who was who did not know about his faith and his christian moral values but who was completely transformed by the love that he had for the crucified jesus the gift given to saint francis was that of beginning to do penance so jesus called saint francis especially to do penance to rebuild the church the gift given this then involved a process of continuing conversion which changed to sweetness those things which before had seemed bitter so all the things as a youth which he felt bitter which he disliked after he was converted all these things became sweet for him he lovingly sacrificed everything silently joyfully saint francis was in due course led to forsake the mental mentality and attitudes of this world and he gave up all the pleasures and desires of the world to live and experience the the path of jesus the path followed by saint francis is a model for the life and formation of us franciscans today for we too are called to walk along the same road until we achieve the full stature of christ so as christians we too are called to follow christ and so we do it through the footsteps of saint francis to live the franciscan life so there are different agents of formation which help the individual to form the first and the main is the holy spirit as saint francis was guided by holy spirit on every path in everything that he did holy spirit was there guiding him through the gospel and through prayer same way the holy spirit is the main agent who leads each each individual for the calling to this secular franciscan order the person to be formed the person to be formed is very important it's very important that person has the zeal and has a desire to follow the life of saint francis the fraternity the fraternity to which it belongs is very plays a very important role in the formation of the individual the council and the minister the formator the spiritual assistant so all these also assist an individual 
to gain the formation. Principles of Franciscan formation. Now let's see about what are the different principles on which the formation is based on. The Franciscan under the grace of the Holy Spirit is the chief protagon protagonist of his or her own formation. Means he is the chief agent of his own formation. It should be the individual person's willingness to undergo the formation. Responsible for accepting and making his own all the values of Franciscan life, capable of making his own decisions and exercising personal initiative. So it should be the individual's decision to join the Franciscan order. He should be guided by the Holy Spirit and he should be able to exercise his duties as a Franciscan. Franciscan formation is a dynamic process. It's a constant change, a process which consciously changes you, converts you, transforms you. In which we open our heart to the gospel in our daily life and commit ourselves fully to being continually converted so as to follow Jesus Christ ever more faithfully in the spirit of St. Francis. So it is not something which is very difficult. Daily by living the gospel way of life, daily increasing in faith, in prayer, in the works of charity, we can grow to become a Franciscan. Franciscan formation. takes place in our fraternity and in the real world. This fraternity is very important that the individual belongs to a fraternity. You cannot say that I can be a Franciscan without joining any fraternity. That's not possible. Franciscans have to have the understanding of a fraternity, of a fraternal life by being with the other brothers and sisters. which encourage us to grow through knowing ourselves and discovering the will of God. Franciscan formation takes place in our fraternity. It is here that we experience the power of grace are renewed in mind and heart and develop our vocation. Now let's come to some specific principles which are helpful in Franciscan formation. Franciscan formation stresses elements of a Franciscan charism. Like we have the charisms of the Holy Spirit, same way there are Franciscan charisms too, which we'll study in detail in the next sessions. Some of these charisms are prayerfulness, simplicity, humility, and awe of creation, penitential, and working for social justice and peace. Franciscan formation is holistic. That is to say, it takes into account our whole person in order that we may develop harmoniously our physical, mental, moral, and intellectual gifts and may integrate ourselves positively in social and community life. So it has, the Franciscan has to be in harmony with everyone around and has to be a peacemaker. Franciscan formation is experiential. That is to say, it is based on the particular life and gifts of each person and encourages the concrete experience of the particular Franciscan style and values in daily life of the fraternity and of the individual. So though, however, I share my experience as being a Franciscan, but unless you yourself as an individual do not experience that Franciscan life that Franciscan charism, that Franciscan spirit in yourself, you won't be able to grow in the order. So it's very important that an individual experiences the call to this order. Franciscan formation is practical in as much as it aims at transforming into action whatever is learned. So whatever we learn during our formation sessions, 
it is not only to keep for ourselves but through that we need to be practical so as we know that saint francis not only was in a prayerful a uh, for not was not only busy praying but he was also into actions as we know that he would go to help the lepers he would go to preach to people around so same way as franciscans we are also called to help others especially by means of a constant habit of poverty and work based on the example of saint francis so as saint francis always lived a life of poverty and all was at work always so too we also are called to this way of life franciscan formation is organized in stages which involve the person from the beginning of the vocation process and on throughout other life so it is not that just you have joined the order and it's over there's a proper organization the formation is properly organized from the time you join the order and it is a continuous process a lifelong process so lifelong you receive this formation to help you change and transform yourself every day franciscan formation dedicates adequate time to study allowing for the particular gifts of each person and without forgetting that learning is not limited to the intellectual dimensions of the person to enable the person to reach an ever fuller knowledge of god and the better to serve everyone so whatever is your whatever is your quality whatever god has blessed you with whatever talent using that talent in your fraternity to develop your fraternity to develop the people around you that is what the formation does so the formation will not only help you to know the other things but it will also enlighten your inner self to understand what talents you have or what qualities you have which can help the society at large the church at large franciscan formation promotes an authentic sense of discipline so it's a proper discipline manner where you have to obey your fraternity you have to obey the higher authorities about you and so you learn to develop this virtue of obedience directed to an honest self knowledge and self control to fraternal life and to service so it also helps us to have a self knowledge of everything and to have a self control and to come out of our sinful ways and we are called to this order for the order of penance to do penance so formation is carried out in two stages initial and ongoing formation so initial formation is the process of prayer and discernment and education leading the inquirers the initiators and the cadets to profession as members of secular franciscan order so that's what initial formation does and then that initial formation not only gives you a time to discern your vocation in the order but also helps the fraternity to understand you more better as a person and as a franciscan so it's a two way process where you understand and gel with the fraternity and grow in the discernment to the vocation and the fraternity also grows in love to you and also grows in the fraternal bond with you and in the ongoing formation it is a lifelong and a continuous process which every secular franciscan needs to undergo to grow in faith and in discipleship so that's how the formation is very important and helps a lot so i hope we all have understood why the formation is important and what are the benefits of having a formation
So let's summarize quickly what we saw. So we saw how the human, the spiritual and the Franciscan formations are interconnected with each other. How the formation not only helps us to develop spiritually, but also intellectually, and it grow, helps us to grow in faith. Franciscan formation is basically dependent on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the agent, the first agent of the formation. And the, France, the formation is connected with the fraternity. And it is through following the example of St. Francis to walk in his footsteps to follow Christ. In our next sessions, we'll study more in detail about the different types of charisms, vocations, and a mission as Franciscan. So thank you so much for listening to me patiently. Let us end the session by, us, by one Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Francis of Assisi, pray for us. St. Clare of Assisi, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.